Joining me now is Congresswoman Donna Edwards, Democrat for Maryland, and Bob Shrum, Democratic strategist and professor at New York University. I mean, uh, Congresswoman, this is outrageous. You have the front runner, the day's getting ready to debate. They go on tonight, the Republican candidates to debate, saying that rather than deal with people talking about corporations must be treated as what they are and be taxed for what they are, he's on their people. You have Senator DeMint accusing uh, the Obama administration of being anti-American and anti-socialist. And this all in the wake of this SNP downgrading saying brinkmanship has caused the downgrading of America. This is outrageous by any standard. Well, I have to tell you, I mean, it's actually really shocking. I don't know who the Republican candidates and, you know, Senator DeMent are talking about, but the American people actually understand that real people go out to the grocery store and are paying more for their groceries. Real people want to find work in this really bad economy. Real people are concerned about their retirement security. Real people are concerned about whether they'll be able to send their children to college. And I was actually glad to see the president out today in Michigan Talk, not just talking about jobs, but demonstrating how U.S. tax dollars have been used to help job creation in a really tough economy in Michigan. And I think we need to do that all around the country, whether he's going to the bridges and roads that need to be fixed or the plants that need to be redeveloped. He'll be talking jobs. We should be creating jobs. And I don't know what the Republicans are doing. But see, there's, there's the disconnect, Congresswoman, because if you and I and others see real people as the people that need the jobs, as the people that we're trying to stand up and say, you've got to deal with the fact that people all over this country, rural and urban, are unemployed, and the Republicans see people as corporations, we are talking on different levels, different wavelengths. Bob Shrum, I think that the real problem is not that Romney and others don't get it. I think we don't get it. They are not operating off the same wavelength that most American people are. They don't understand when we're talking about what people need in this country because they have a different well, definition of who we are. Yeah, well, Reverend, I think that's completely right. And we now know why they keep Mitt Romney off the campaign trail. You know, uh, Ben Smith at Politico said they have the Mittness Protection Program, <laughs> which is they hide him away because every time he goes out there, he says or does something goofy and shows how out of touch he is. Jim DeMint, uh, that's an uglier and more sinister oh thing God. that we heard. Yes. It's part of the whole use of code words against this president, Marxist, socialist, collectivist, anti-American to somehow or other paint him as other than us, as alien to us. You know, uh, the two examples he cited, DeMint cited, were health reform and financial reform. That's why the president was so anti-American. Well, you know, health reform is as anti-American as Theodore Roosevelt, who proposed it almost a century ago. Right. And financial reform is as un-American as Dwight Eisenhower, who supported strict regulations on Wall Street in the 1950s. Well, let me say this, Bob, the, the, the irony to me is that the president was in Michigan today where right. he did the auto bailout. Let me show you how un-American he was and what that <laughs> bailout meant. I mean, for DeMint to be saying this where the president was in Michigan, where Detroit where was the backbone of this country's economy for many years, the auto industry, he saved 1.4 million jobs and prevented $96.5 billion in personal income losses. Does that sound to me anti-American? Does that sound socialist? I mean, this is outrageous to try and project that when he is really at a place that literally was taken back from the brink. Let me ask you this though, Congresswoman uh, Edwards. There's been a lot of talk about the president ought to call the Congress back from vacation and not go on vacation himself. He directly addressed that today. Listen to this as the president directly talked about those that said he should come back to Washington or require or at least ask the Congress to come back. There's been a lot of talk in Washington right now that I should call Congress back early. The last thing we need is Congress spending more time arguing in D.C. So, 
what, what I figure is they need to spend more time out here listening to you and hearing how fed up you are. That's why I'm here. Do you feel that if uh, the Congress came back, if the president called them back, that uh, oh, you and your colleagues will stand in the uh, House floor and grab arms and sing Kumbaya? Well, we're definitely not going to sing Kumbaya. And I have to tell you, I really, I do, you know, share the president's view that we need to be out in our communities and our districts, you know, really hearing from the American people. On the other hand, the only reason that we should come back is if we were going to pass a surface transportation bill that would uh, call on us to fix our roads and our bridges and our water and sewer systems and get millions of people back to work and then uh, get out of, out of Dodge. My fear, of course, is that we were to come back, the president probably is. Is, you know is right I want him really standing st strong for creating jobs for the American people I think that he's on the high road here he knows that's what we need to do and it's really a simple formula this job creation it really is about fixing this nation's infrastructure putting us into a, a place where we can be competitive investing in research and development and manufacturing like the president was you know there at a new economy manufacturing plant today these are real jobs for the American people this this is what we ought to do. The president needs to be in his bully pulpit, on the road, under a bridge, at a water main uh, that's 100 years old, and calling on the Congress to do what's right by the American people and pass a jobs plan. Bob, not only does the president get it uh, uh, as far as talking about jobs and using his bully pulpit, the American people gets it. Look at this Washington Post poll uh, just uh, a day and a half old. It says that in August of this year, right now, 71% feel that the government is focused on the wrong things. In October of 2010, right before the election, only 55%. Now this is interesting, Bob, and you're the strategist and the expert here. It seems that before the Republicans took control of Congress in November of 10, less Americans felt we were in the wrong direction than they do now. Oh, I think that's absolutely right, and I think Congresswoman Edwards is right. Uh, we need to invest in jobs, and what has to happen here is you have to have a short-term program to sustain this economy and this recovery, and a medium and longer-term program to cut debt and deficits. Republicans aren't interested in that. In my view, they've demonstrated over and over again, especially during this debt ceiling debate, that they're ready to ruin the economy to try to take the White House. And the sheer hypocrisy of some of these folks is breathtaking. You know, you were talking about saving the auto industry and the bailout in Michigan and all those jobs. Mitt Romney opposed that. Yet when he was running a buyout co company that specialized in buyout and stripping down other companies and firing people, he took a $10 million bailout for himself and his partners and made millions of dollars. I don't think if he is the Republican nominee, he'd fare very well in Michigan when people know that. Bob, your problem is you don't understand corporations are people. Uh, corporations are people. <laughs> Congresswoman Donna Edwards, Bob Shrum, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Republicans